So uh, hi, everybody. We're, <laughs> we're glad you made it. Uh, and we might have some more that make it in about an hour <laughs> <laughs> for, from now, which is completely possible. That's okay. We can all, we can all do it. So today's icebreaker question is your most hated airport. Oh God, LA. Feel free to. Oh, sorry. I'm on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not muted. <laughs> oh, LA. Did somebody say LAX? Because yes, another <laughs> terrible airport. <laughs> I'm glad I could have this. All right, so uh, this is great. Uh, so I, I did want to bring up to folks here. Um, I think we may have an opportunity for some support to run a workshop for this group. Uh, prob I'm, timing would be up to us, um, but like a one day workshop to kind of focus on, on open source project sustainability in the university context. So this is a really simple draft of some of the text that I have in here. I don't know what people's thoughts are on this text. If you could give it a quick read. Make any suggestions in here. Yeah, please make any comments you want. Shouldn't take too long to read. What do y'all think? I mean, I think it's great, but I do we know, do we, so the, I know the curious group is having are their own kind of one day workshops every six months and okay, stuff. We want to try and figure out uh yeah. that one's supposed to be in June. Um so this one this wouldn't overlap, but um do we try to make sure that the because there's a lot of overlap in the groups just to make yeah, sure yeah. That, um, yeah. um so where's the one in June? It's in Vermont. I don't know if that's official. I know it because I lost I lost the bidding war to have it in <laughs> So I know that it's in Vermont. There's a bidding Justin war. I might not have known that yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or and, and Michael might not have heard that. Oh, and Michael would have heard it because they were also. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind going to Vermont though. That sounds kind of nice to me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to Vermont. People aren't coming to Santa Cruz. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so, no, but, but yeah, so it's just, in, that's just for curious folks, right? Yeah, that's just for curious folks. Okay. No, I'm just wondering how, like, because it seems a very similar kind of discussion. So I'm just making sure that, like, the metrics aspect is like coming yeah, out. A can, little bit more. Yeah, like really highlight that here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. we can do that. Um, okay. I mean, my thought would be uh, is is if we can get support to fund people's travel. I don't know how Curious is doing it, but to help support people's travel, but then also to to have the project be or the workshop be open to kind of anybody right. that would like to participate. Um, is there something? Is there a, are there conferences that people go to in fall? Sometimes it's kind of nice to align these with things that are existing. You know what I mean? Like if it was Open Source Summit North America, but that one chips all over the place. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any, like anything they're doing well, in the fall that they know of? Well, I mean, there's all things open. Oh yeah. Which I know some folks will be going to. It's in October, and then um, we have our our event in late September, but that's a UC specific. But yeah, we I'm happy to you know, like host a side event or help host a side event. But I think um, a good idea. I like that idea, and it's yeah. it's probably it's a relatively easy place to get to. Yeah. Okay. It overlaps with uh. So the I my issue with I going to all things open is that I always go to the 
GSOC Mentor Summit, which is the weekend before. And so I never, so I don't typically go to all things open, but if you, we had this as a side of it, maybe towards in, maybe not on the first day or yeah. um, as a prep, a pre-event, maybe yeah. um, I might be able, I mean, or if not me, then um, I, we split it. So Emily, somebody else could like Emily goes, yeah, my Santa colleague Cruz. Emily goes to the okay. um, all things open and I go to. Have people been to the all things open conference here on this call? I haven't, but I was planning on going. Oh, it's great. I went for the first time last year. I was surprised how much I liked it. <laughs> hmm. uh, it's a really well put together event. There's a lot of students who are there as well. A lot of folks from industry. It's just a, a great mix of, of people who are doing open source things. Yeah, Mike, do you have a comment too? Oh, I was just saying I've been there, but okay. in terms of conferences, there's also, I've never been, but there's GitHub universe. If there's a lot of people interested in GitHub, I think That's last year idea. they had a, uh, yeah. Did they have like an yeah. academic focus thing surrounding year, that too? Yeah, they did. You're right. I didn't go to that one. I went to the OSPO um, advisory board thing, okay. but one of my colleagues was at the academic track and, and they do it the day for the start of universe. Okay. So, um, and I feel like that, was that in Oct late October? I was going to say, when is that one? I feel like it's late October, early November. November. Yeah. And it's in, in San Francisco. Okay. But it's very GitHub. I mean, like it's, you, you would have to like, yeah, GitHub yeah. Would, would have to be like involved with. Okay. Well, I mean, like if you were in a tie it too, you would have to talk to the person. Did, 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 Elizabeth, did you go to GitHub Universe? I have been. Uh, okay. It's been years. So. Oh, you didn't go recently. Mm -mm. Okay. No, uh, uh Okay. I went like 2018 or 2017 was the last time. Well, I think these are great starts. Sean, you have your hand raised too? I was just going to mention that in the scientific research software group, and I think here and also at CZI, I've heard some reluctance on the part of open source scientific software folk to um use the word community like it almost makes them feel like you're asking me to do more work and i mean i know chaos we're all about community health but i also know that some of these niche projects community is not really their thing like just finding sustainability cho options with or without community is is a bit more the framing that i've observed so are you is that in response to this text in here yeah can you yeah. if you well I, i'm just i'm kind of curious if others have had the same impression or if i'm talking to different people or what okay before i make changes i just wanted to throw that idea make out sure there that for that socialization for... yeah yeah <laughs> it's not like crazy sean doing stuff uh i can probably back up like there's folks I've talked to as well um, who are faculty and express hesitation at open source in general uh, for for these reasons. Um, so I think there's ways, yeah, there's a ways to word it where it could be like providing additional support for open research artifacts or, or something like that rather than being like, increasing the amount of maintainers who are also teachers and also researchers and also administrators um if that makes sense it does okay yeah sean please update uh yeah i don't know if you i think somebody may already have done it because okay <laughs> gone from the first instance <laughs> way to go whoever did that oh here we go uh David, I don't know if you know what we're talking about here. I don't know when you joined, but this is, I think we we may have the opportunity for some financial support to run a workshop in the fall to bring all of us together. And this was just some of the text that would kind of describe what that workshop could be. And we were just talking about a few places where we could maybe run this in conjunction with some other open source, open sourcey events. So that's what's going on here. Awesome. Sounds great. Cool. Thanks for the update. Yep. Uh, more to come on that. If people want to be involved, that's great. 
But again, I think the funding could help support a venue, help support some travel costs, that kind of stuff. And I really would like this workshop to be open to all who have an interest, not necessarily just this group of folks that join this call all the time. Okay, moving on. Um, David, I actually two things, David, I'm putting you on the spot. So last week you, I wasn't, or two weeks ago, I wasn't on the call, but it sounds like there was some discussion about or some reflection that you had had. Do you remember this? Um, I got inspired by the call two weeks ago, um, okay. to anytime I have an opportunity to bin things or create lists, I get really excited. So, um, <laughs> It's good to know about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know why, but at the call, after the call, I just decided to put this grouping together to try to build a matrix, try to help um, build out the matrix that I think that was part of the the, the idea. Yeah. The question is, you know, what, what are the metrics for open source? Um, and then I think there was some discussion about well it depends what your focus is it depends if you're talking about this or this and it, it can get yeah, these different groups from different organizations different pathways are going to all have different metrics that they need so yeah. i was just trying to create some initial structure for a bin that we could maybe that's start, great start a further discussion okay i started working off this a little bit too just kind of taking a look at some of the community things like so I, I added a little bit um people had a chance to take a look at this this was posted in slack a couple weeks ago and sean had put it here in a doc mm -hmm. yeah this is we uh david posted this right after our last meeting yeah so um when i took a look at this david a lot of it kind of I'm trying to, I'm trying like you, trying to kind of organize all of these thoughts together. Um, a lot of this seemed focused on like the, the downstream kind of components that you might uh, encourage a researcher to measure their work on. So for example, lines like work output, I'm guessing this is like researchers at the university and you're trying to measure their particular work output. Is that right? And then you I was trying to make this really general. So I wasn't okay. um, the use cases can get specific, but I was actually thinking even okay. of industry and, and other things. Just what can you measure that might okay. be of value? Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. And what are the quantifiable things? <laughs> things, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay. So I'm going to kind of, at least when I saw this list, I was going to hold it a bit because um, I think there are some really good things in here in terms of project or community and individual. Okay. What do people think about this? Any thoughts? Sean, you had kind of taken a look at this as well. I think I think it's useful as an um, like it lays out the kinds of things that might be the initial things that we want to measure, and um, there's some of it that's not, of course, in the in the chaos realm like citations. However, citations and dollars are important. So, it, I <clears throat> I'm facing the data. I, I'm like immediately jumping to the probably. Aspos that universities are going to be asked to draw some kind of analysis between the dollars generated, the citations generated, and the uh, software products. Like that's, I don't know if that's kind of what you see coming, uh, David. But if yeah, I put I all think these things together, that's what I see. Part of it is I want to, I want to see change like Helios is working towards, where for promotion and tenure. People are making using metrics to help incentivize open science <laughs> and open outputs. And so, how can we enable? How can we use metrics to enable okay. people to get promotions and and get tenure? Mm -hmm.
Okay. Um, so over the last few days, I, I've been kind of taking a look at <laughs> who added that. <laughs> We'll never know. Done. I don't know. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Just thought since we were talking about the UK, I would uh, right. bring that up, time zones. Um, so part of part of my struggle a lot is like we have we have these metrics that can help people kind of articulate tenure and promotion. Um, but I go back to some of our earlier questions that we had just around how to get people to understand why to even engage in open source in the first place. That seemed like that was from like a couple of meetings ago. <laughs> this was like, let's not worry. Like it's hard to convince people to, to put together metrics around tenure and promotion when also even understanding um, why to engage in open source in the first place is even a thing. So it's kind of a walk before you can run. So I, I put together uh, a slide deck that I'm not going to necessarily share here. Um, and I was thinking about the goals that we have. So kind of uh, from the use perspective about why you're considering using open source. And so the slide deck is was intended to kind of help perhaps within your organization talk through with researchers why they might want to participate in open source. And this is a it's, a, it's a slide deck that I've, I've repurposed and I, I've used this quite a bit, not at universities ever, uh, but I've used it at corporations and nonprofits to talk about open source participation. So I've modified it a bit to think kind of from the university perspective. So the slide deck, I, I was kind of working off these components that we had established earlier, again, from an earlier meeting that sustainability and innovation. I don't really have the reproducibility in here, but connect with community and all those kind of things. So if we can get people to think about why they would want to participate, then maybe the metrics that David had brought forward are going to be helpful. Like you're, you're doing this work, you know, so now let's capture the things that can kind of demonstrate that you're doing this work. So the, the way that this is set up is there are a couple of questions that I've used in the past that can help kind of break the ice with people. So if you have an audience of 20 people, you know, discuss how your organization is currently participating in, in open source or open source communities, and maybe communities is not the, the right word here. It kind of gives you a uh, gives you an understanding as the person kind of delivering the course as to where people's minds are at and what kind of support they think they have. There's another set of icebreaker questions the the goal was set up uh, in using the slide slide deck to kind of really help people understand why you might want to participate or why you as a as a project may want to participate in open source so there are a couple again without walking through everything a couple different reasons why an organization or uh, a project may want to participate in open source and i tried to line these up around these top components up here. Following why you might want to do this, <laughs> why as a researcher you would even entertain this idea at all. Um, the next is kind of how, how you would go about participating in open source. So what are the considerations that you want to do it? So you've been convinced as a researcher that sure, this is a value. And here are the, the ways to think about that participation. So um, considering things around value and costs, considering things around why you would want to upstream versus not upstream, how you think about your own review process, and then finally, how you think about positioning the work that you're doing within, within a particular market. Some lead off questions at the end that help kind of engage in a conversation, and that's the end of it. So is is this didn't take me much time. So if you don't like this, I don't particularly care. So, and and like I don't like David. Like he likes making lists. I like getting things down, like documented, just because it helps me talk through things a little bit better. 
I mean, is something like this helpful at all for folks? Would this be something that you, it's again, it's not perfect here, but would this be something that would be useful inside of your organization to talk to people? Yeah, Mike. Um, I think this is useful in the sense of, from my experience, the biggest disconnect is, you know, like we have a lot of ways of measuring the health of an open source community and like, you know, understanding that, right? And then there's a lot of notions of like beneficial outcomes that are measured in a variety of ways within academic institutions. Yep. But we don't have necessarily great ways of connecting uh connecting those those two things together. And so I think in particular, like these whys that you have on yeah. maybe like slides six through ten could yeah. be a good way that we could approach trying to connect these these things. Cause there have been so many days that honestly I will like sit at my desk and I will open up the metrics page on chaos and I will look at them and I'll just be trying to figure out like in reality, what do they mean yes. to, to us? Right. This, and I this, feel so stuck. This, this thing that you're trying to do. Yeah. So I think that that was the main, one of the big things that stuck out to me when looking over these slides. Okay. Um, what are thoughts on what Mike just brought up? I'm kind of dumping a whole slide deck on you here. But <laughs> so I think the I think the path that most people doing scientific open source in a lab take is less focused on ever considering notions of leveraged development and more along the lines of I got a science problem. I need some software, I'll put it in an open source repository. But that's so I think that I think the university path is often not the same as the other path, the corporate path. What I was trying to do here though is like here I went off that list that David had put together. Okay. So the level this was just about using and contributing. I see. So this is just kind of those first, so yeah, I should have pointed that out. This is really just those first two things. So like how as a research team, are we thinking about our use of open source? And how do we think about contributing huh. back to the projects that we may particularly care about? So it's okay. just kind of those first two stages there. And then we may have what you're talking about, kind of a whole other set of, stuff, All right. just kind of the down right. green. All right. Yeah. The, yeah. This. This. I'm getting it now with David's context. Uh, okay. In there. And it would be for users and maybe project creators and owners because they're consuming open source software. And Mike, I, I struggle with what you're talking about as well. I'm just trying to locate the metrics sometimes. So if I look at any one atomic metric, I, I'm trying to figure out where it resides in the process. Um, is both valuable to the OSPO and both valuable to the researcher. <laughs> These are kind of two different groups. And if those are misaligned, then we do have a problem, I agree. Um, and so the intention of this is like, if we can't even get, and maybe these aren't, the whys aren't perfect, but if we can't even get researchers to understand why they would participate in open source, then we can't really measure it. <laughs> like if we can't convince them why this is something that's important then doing any measurement is not going to do us any good. And so the intention of the slides was to get people to that spot where we have kind of a common understanding of the things we're working on, and then we can begin to measure against those. Yeah, Mike. Um, one question I have for you in terms of the whys, I mean, it sounds like these whys are like more individually focused, right? Like why would a researcher want to produce open source? whatever. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of folks I talk to that like, in terms of virtue, they agree with open source. And they're like, yeah, of course, like, yeah, there's a natural benefit to sharing, you have shared infrastructure costs. And like, you know, it's more accessible, you can modify all these things that we kind of yep. talk about here. But like, you know, as I think most people are 
familiar with is like, uh, you know, for whether good or bad reasons, they're like, well, I don't really have the capacity for it. And I'm not necessarily rewarded for this work, even though I know it's virtuous. So one thing that I've been interested in, and I don't want to derail this, but it, if it's useful, I figured I'd say is like, you know, institutionally, like, a university is trying to make certain things happen, generate research grant funding, yep. you know, generate research impact and stuff like that. And, you know, through that, like you, the university will try to provide what resources and rewards it can to people to make that happen. So I'm curious from the perspective of these slides in this discussion, do you, who do you think the like, we're trying to convince and do you think one is more important than other or should we approach them all in this case i was trying to convince the researchers that's the audience for this um and i think i can get past that virtuous part in the sense that so many researchers are already using open source software <laughs> i mean this is the argument like in the company you're already doing this, trust me. Even though you may not think you are, you're definitely engaged <laughs> in this activity. So why don't we go ahead and try to formalize that engagement so you understand what it is that you're doing. And you, not everybody may do all of these whys, but you're probably doing one or two of them. And if we can formalize this, then we can start measuring against it. That's That was the intention here. So yeah, David. I'm I'm a bit uh, confused now. I was thinking of something, and you mentioned something else. Now I'm confused. Oh, sorry. Because you said uh, people are using it. So is that about using open source or generating open source? This is a, so we have both. We have both sides of the okay. coin. So definitely, I care about both. But this was really about using it. Using okay. okay yeah. Right, so this because... was just about the consumption of open source. And to measure that, okay, fine. Because yeah. from the other perspective of what uh, Sean was saying, uh, people who doesn't want a community and this kind of thing that scares. Uh, now in UK, there is also the the REF, this research excellent framework points things that we yes. have here. They accept now software as well. And for example, in our department, they were we were starting like saying, okay, who who is producing open source and who wants to to be named on our proposals for the ref next gotcha. time yeah so, but if it's in use yeah uh, everyone is doing it so so, so uh, why don't we go now <laughs> there may be there may be some i mean like perhaps none of you in universities ospo care about people using open source software like that's not a concern for any of you in the companies there certainly is a concern just from oftentimes from a licensing <laughs> and IP perspective, as open source is entering the organization, they care. So it this it may be a case here where we just we don't really care about the upstream consumption of open source, and all we care about is the downstream community building, you know, open source software making kind of endeavor. Yeah, David. I, Sean, go ahead. No, David, you can go. Okay. okay. So I was saying, like, on terms of usage, we do, at least in our department, which we are research software engineers helping others to write software, uh, there have been a group of people in our team that would like to contribute back, essentially, and how mm -hmm. to support open source communities that are either use across many research. So you have the big projects, say in Python, Pandas, NumPy, they have a lot of funding from different industries that they can, that they, they don't need much of the researchers to actually say, oh, we are using that, we need them. So from our perspective, we are trying to get some kind of metrics on usage, mostly to promote the use, the, to get the excuse on the university say, look, we should fund the thing more. Uh, and and that might be a reason of how we get people to actually participate on those kind of metrics saying, 
the software you're using, it's only maintained by one person. So let's let's help them. Make sure it doesn't die in the upstream. If it does, right. then. Yep. Um, okay, that's helpful. Yeah, Sean. I, I was just thinking the one thing this does bring forward, and we haven't really talked about it, is that universities do get a pretty significant invisible benefit from the consumption and use of open source software. So there's a lot of things that I get for free that, you know, 20 years ago, I'd have to pay for. I'm talking about SPSS and all of the various things I'd have to pay for that or MATLAB. Um, I, can, I can do every scientific analysis I need to do now with open source software. And it's like uh, David mentioned, it's the pandas ecosystem. It's the R ecosystem. It's Python. And so this leverage, the university is getting the benefit of this leverage, and maybe that's a separate story that's important to tell when you're making the case for open source at a university. I don't know, but that's what it made me think of. With corporations, I, I know their contexts are different, but I have found this conversation about usage to be the easier place to start than actually building whole communities downstream. <laughs> It just it's it's a little bit easier simply because they're already engaged in this activity. They being the companies or they being the university. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's maybe just a little jarring for this group because we haven't thought about this before or <laughs> talked about it in this group, right? So we've been talking about manual, you know, making open source. Am I right here? Am I am I interpreting that right? I don't know looking for anyone else to talk but Matt and I. <laughs> David. <laughs> I'm new here, so I don't have anything. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, David. All right, I don't have any clear talk uh, thoughts <laughs> on what you're saying. Um, <laughs> Yes, they're very different. The the I just want to for clarity the levels that you're you're using. I should not get credit. Um, I took them straight from the Austin, UT Austin um, yes. participation pathways. I just really like them. I think they're they're really good for referencing. Um, I, it's a very different conversation if you're talking about using and contributing versus your own project. I think. It's very also very different from a corporate standpoint versus a university standpoint. Agreed. Having been in corporate, you know, the incentive to share is very low. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> hard to, to everyone who wants to make money and keep their things proprietary. There's lawyers get involved and, you know, it all becomes a risk. Um, whereas universities, if, if they want to be true open science advocates and experts in research, I think they need to be, um, then they really have incentives to to make their their science, their software, all their research outputs open and available for everybody. So I think there's a huge push towards that, not from the usage and contributing perspective, but definitely from the creating and sharing Okay. Projects and, and work that they build. Fair. Thanks. Yeah, Jen. So I don't know if this is helpful or not. I was just going to say this is one of the places where I always, because I'm in the, I'm in the library and I'm the open source I participate in. It's not research projects. It's infrastructure stuff. And so, this is like, this is like where it gets confusing to me when you talk about the university open source because it makes it sound like the university open source is all one thing as opposed to like this sort of researcher focused open source and then more infrastructure type open source but both are happening at the university and for those things that are infrastructure type it's totally reasonable and necessary for the for the university say the university library to participate in the open source projects that are producing the infrastructure that they're using and for that to be like like this is sort of what I'm interested in. It's like that's a really important place of collaboration, say, between university libraries. <clears throat> but it's not really an individual researcher. So I guess so I guess that that's a where it feels like there's a little more um variation than yeah. just the researcher centered. Uh, 
Uh, this, this is great. Thank you. I have a follow up question, but yeah, David, you have a response. Yeah, I welcome to follow up on what uh, she said because uh, I think that the problem here is that infrastructure is something that it lasts longer. Research projects last the PhD student time, the postdoc student time, like the, the, the postdoc time, like they are doing something, they're using it three years later, they lost a contract or they left to a different university and that the project might not continue. So it's hard, it's more changing more frequently, but in, where infrastructure is something like, okay, we are creating something that it will last like for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. And I think that that's why I agree with you that it makes it more sense to have that there, or at least as a starting point, it may be easier to start there. So could you say that again, David? So is it that as people that, are, yeah, go ahead. That, that I think that infrastructure in a university is a longer term than research software. Research software, it lasts, what we see is that a postdoc comes to a, a research lab do come up with something, write some software, then the postdoc leaves, then the software is there, that no one uses it because no one understands it. That's the classical use case of research software, which we're trying to change in our department. But uh, but I, I find that, that if, like, if I need to start here in the university looking at teaching infrastructure or um, research as to where to measure the usage of open source, I will find a lot, a lot easier on infrastructure because it will have less variety and less people to ask about. Okay. Then software and teaching, like research software and teaching, this, there's more, there's way more variation because research software sometimes like, oh, I'm gonna use this thing. Oh, this doesn't work. Okay, I'm gonna change library. I'm gonna use this some other things. So you may change from Julia to R to Python to 300 things. Um, and w while you're doing your PhD, uh so it, that may make it harder to decide if we want to support them into i don't know provide support to a library or something this is more variation more i don't know flu fluctuation maybe no that's helpful um so so jen in your situation you do care about this type of use i know it may not be perfect in the slides but this is something that you do monitor Yeah, I so uh yes, in the sense that the the library is using a bunch of open source, participating in the communities around it. Yeah. And maybe or maybe not contributing financially. Yeah. Um and that um I guess sort of beyond that, that there's just like there's a lot of like financial pressures on libraries, right? And so open source can be appealing or not, depending on on okay. how the money shakes out. But but anyway, yeah, I, that, I guess that's all I was saying is that like that, that's a place where I can I see you know more openness about the community and using and contributing back part because like you're it, it's exactly what you're saying. It's less ephemeral and it's for everybody, and there's a there sh there should be a greater sense that if you're using stuff you're supporting it because mm -hmm. it's like becoming part of your organization do you track any of that at all that usage or is it just kind of you know when you see it um i would say i'm here because i feel like we're more on the you know it when you see it side. okay <laughs> it doesn't always feel like there's like a like it, it feels like there's room to grow strategically, I guess, I guess is what I would say in terms of like okay. measuring and planning and stuff. Okay. Okay. This is really helpful. I really appreciate the conversation from, from everybody. From So it does sound like there's some interest. It does shift us a little bit, but maybe some interest in articulating how we use open source software and how it could be... Um, measured to support strategic decisions. I'm gonna, what I'm also hearing is that a lot, a lot of the focus was on kind of creating communities and thinking about how that can help kind of the outside, the other side of the coin, which is the more downstream, you're a researcher, you're gonna produce open source products. How do we support that endeavor? Um, 
are, are slide decks like this helpful at all to people? Pretend that I was able to make this slide deck and or we were able to work on this slide deck in such a way that we could have a slide deck, you know, open source 101 for using open source, how to, how to think about usage within your organization to make strategic decisions. And another slide deck, you know, open source 101, how to, how to make a community and, you know, ship your product downstream. I see a, a nod, some noddings going on. Okay. Um, from the sounds of it, one of the things would be to potentially make this a little bit smaller and a little bit tighter, um, and then think about how how we use things downstream. And I think too, if we the downstream use would tie in then better with the list that David had put together. Because when I was thinking about usage on this slide deck here, this one on one, I wasn't able to really think through how these metrics would play in, because I think they're more downstream, produce produce community type of metrics and how we identify and support people in doing that work, particularly in their tenure process. I, I, I'll just say this, this is really hard for me. There's just a lot of different ways of looking at this, <laughs> whether it's the upstream or the downstream or the, the different people or the different metrics that we have available to us. I think Mike had kind of pointed this out as well. There's just, there's so many different things to take a look at. And I, I'm just trying to set some of the groundwork that I think is necessary before we move into the actual metrics that we can measure. Like if we can't create kind of a common understanding of of how we're participating in open source, then it's hard to measure things. Yeah, Sean. The David Lippert made a annotation of the University of Texas using, contributing, sharing, accepting, participating, advancing, or whatever yes. um, in his document. And I think that that document or that framework really helped me think of it. Um, think of what the path is here, or at least prompted for me that this using piece is what's, I don't know, I feel like we haven't discussed it a lot, but it is, if we're trying to help universities understand the value of open source, it seems like the using story should be there. Um, so it's something to think about. Yeah, well, like I said, when I'm talking, I understand David, that these are not, universities are not corporations, but like when I'm talking to corporations, the honestly, the easiest, point of traction that I get is this using part. It's the easiest thing to talk about because they're already doing it and it's an easy argument for me to make and I can prove it in like five seconds, <laughs> you know? Um, I think usually it, it just says, just go ahead and turn off the internet and see how productive your <laughs> software developers are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> is the argument that can be made. So, all right. Yeah, David. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. And I, I agree with what Jen was saying as well. Um, I think you could benefit from the lists I put together by helping you scope things down. So you could just focus on, you know, the top five bullets, the reasons were, were, t were taken from your slide deck. Um, yep. And so you could just focus on, con you know, connecting with community and then using and then supporters which would be institutions um and then and then try to figure out what are the metrics that would be valuable there that you would mm -hmm. want to you know help people make a decision you know about what communities they want to be be connecting with for for projects that they're using yep i think that makes a lot so, of sense but, but yeah it gets really overwhelming really fast because there's so many different perspectives so you get these like th <laughs> these <laughs> You know, these uh, like three dimensional things that you're trying to hold on to, <laughs> you know, and then put metrics on these spots. Um, and it does get really tricky. Uh, okay, this is really helpful. And thanks for all of this conversation. Um, just trying to sort this out so we can get to those metrics. So, all right. Till next time, everybody, I'm going to put some things in Slack between now and then. Um, so, again, really appreciate the conversation. So, have a great afternoon. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye.